Are you struggling to defend in Rainbow Six Siege? Are you just constantly getting slammed by Ash, Yana, Amaru? Are you just finding it difficult to play on defense? Well, if you do, luckily for you, today, I'm going to be ranking every single defender in Rainbow Six Siege, giving you an in-depth explanation of why they're in the rank, how much utility they can bring to the team, and so much more. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have at least learned something new and potentially found a new defender to try. So if you enjoy this type of video and you learn something new, make sure to hit that sub button, join the Pixel Peak Army and support your boy. But without further ado, let's get right into the tier list. So here we go. We've got all the operators here in year nine, season two. And uh, the one thing I wanna talk about before we actually get into ranking is how I'm going to rank these operators, right? So for the attackers list that I did a couple of days ago, the big thing that I focused on was flexibility, right? How usable are they on the majority of bomb sites when you're attacking? But obviously that's a little bit more difficult to say with the defenders, because I mean, technically you could use any defender on any bomb site for the most part, and you know, it would be fine. However, what I want to focus on today for the defenders is how much utility do they bring to the team on a round to round basis? Are they good only on a few bomb sites where you can really have a nice setup or are they just good constantly bringing utility and constantly helping the team win and then the other two things that i want to look into is are they good in solo queue are they good in team play because these are important uh, factors because not everybody plays on a team and not everybody plays solo queue so i want to look at both sides but anyways the first thing i want to do is put an operator in each of these tiers so that we can have something to compare to as we move forward through the list so for example, S tier, I'm gonna put Azami up there. Um, Azami is amazing. She has a really good kit. She has a deagle to make headholes. She has uh, impact grenades, which are amazing. So she can help you set up site. But what really makes Azami amazing is her Kiba barriers. She can morph the map to whatever you guys need on the fly. So if you're getting pushed from a certain area, throw a Kiba down or slow down the attackers. But really what makes her so good is you, the setups that you can do with her. You can make crazy pixel peaks. You can put them on stairways to slow down attackers and make them have to either destroy it or go a different way. But also the mind games that you can play with Azami are really good. Because when an attacker sees an Azami, a Kiba barrier, they're gonna either, first of all, play slowly as they approach it because they don't know what's behind it, but they're also gonna debate, should I shoot this? Should I give away my position? Or should I go a different route? Right? Do I want to crouch under this Azami barrier on a doorway and potentially get smoked by somebody waiting for me on the other side? Even if there's nobody there, you're playing those mind games. You're putting that ghost pressure on, and that's one of the greatest things about Azami. And yes, she did get nerfed. You can shoot out her Kiba barriers, but like I said before, it gives away your position, and it's not like it's super easy to destroy the Kiba barriers. It takes like a clip and a half. By then, you could get swung. People could come from above, from below. There's so many ways you can die, and so... Not many people actually end up shooting out the Kiba Bears, but even if they do, guess what? You have more in your back pocket. Just throw another one. That's why Azami's gonna make it an S. She's great in team play. She's great in solo queue, and you can use her on every bomb site and always bring good utility to your team. Next on the list in A tier is gonna be my boy, Wamai. What does Wamai not do? Well, to be honest, he does a little bit of everything. He's got a decent primary weapon. He's got a Keratos to help make site setups. He's got impact grenades and his ability is top tier when it comes to stopping attacker utility. And at the end of the day, that's one of the biggest things that you need as a defender. If they're gonna start lobbing nades and flashbangs and yings and all kinds of other stuff into the site, most likely you guys are gonna get smoked, right? But what Wamai allows you to do is magnetize, take away all of that utility and essentially just make the attacking team waste it, which is great. It's gonna slow them down. It's gonna make them have less uh, of a chance to be able to kill you. And Wamai is just amazing and he brings so much value because you can just throw his magnets all over the map. It's very simple to just place them and forget about it. And then next thing you know, it comes down to crunch time and the Wamai magnet saves you from getting flashed and you get that last minute frag and you end up winning the round. That's what makes Wamai so good. Again, he's good on every bomb site for the most part. Great solo queuer, great team play, just an amazing character. And if you're not using Wamai and you really need somebody new, trust me, use him. You're gonna see 
really good character. Next on the list is Castle, and he's gonna come in at the B tier. Uh, Castle's a great character, just a nice basic operator who's gonna bring you value and utility on pretty much every bomb site. And really what makes Castle so good is that he does a great, great job of slowing down the attackers, which is something that I'm gonna be talking about a lot on this list, because at the end of the day, you don't have to kill all the attackers to win on defense. You just need to slow them down enough so that A, they can't plant, or they have to rush into sight and then you guys get the kills, right? What you wanna do as a defender, for the most part, is slow down the attackers as much as possible, waste as much time as possible. And the majority of the operators that are gonna be up here in the top of the rankings are gonna be operators that really do a good job of slowing down the attackers. On top of other stuff as well, of course, but that's a big factor to what makes a good defender versus a mid defender, right? An issue with Castle that I run into is when people don't know how to use him, right? When they start barricading people out of sight, when they start turtling up sight and giving uh, you and your teammates no opportunity to kind of go out and take space, that's when Castle can get really bad, right? So if you know how to use Castle, which it doesn't take a lot of brain power, it's just simply don't turtle off the site, you know, give people the opportunity to rotate in and out of sight, then you're gonna be fine. And he's gonna bring a ton of utility and once again, like I said, slow down those attackers. Because we all know, we've played against the castle, he can be a real pain in the ass sometimes if you don't bring the right utility and you aren't able to push through a certain area that you planned on pushing through, right? Again, great operator, brings a lot of utility. He's got a really good kit as well. He's got the shotgun, but he's also got the UMP, which is just an amazing, solid, very just standard weapon in Rainbow Six Siege that you can do well with. If you struggle to control recoil or you're just kind of, you know, not having a good time in gunfights, try out the UMP, try out Castle. I'm telling you, he's gonna be good. And he's doesn't require a lot of thought, really. You can just, at minimum, put them on windows and areas where the enemy team might repel and try to kill you guys. And there you go, you've brought some utility to the team and you're playing an operator who has a good kit. And you know, that's all you can ask for. Next on the list in C tier is gonna be Thorn. Uh, there's a few people that I could have put here, but I think Thorn is fair. I, I just think her traps are extremely weak. The best thing that they do is give you a sound cue, but they take so long to activate that the, honestly, the odds of you killing somebody with a Thorn is little to none. Again, they make a sound cue, so that's nice. Uh, but what I do like about Thorn is she has access to a deployable shield. She also has a pretty nice primary weapon. I do enjoy the Uzi quite a lot. And Again, the sound cues are decent, and in combination with maybe barbed wire or something like that, you know, you could find a way to kill people with her traps. But other than that, how much utility does she bring to the team? I would say little to none. Not enough to put her in D tier, but she only has three traps that, you know, again, just make a little sound cue, and that's about it. The really the best utility she brings is the deployable shield. So. For that, I'm gonna put her in C. Again, not a terrible operator, but the people above her are just gonna bring boatloads more utility. And so that's why she's gonna come in at C. And finally for D tier, Kavera. I mean, we all kind of expected this. Kavera brings zero utility to the team. The only thing she can do is interrogate, but that requires a lot of setup and that's not a guarantee on a round to round basis. And secondly, her kit is terrible. Her primary weapon's horrible. The best gun she has in her kit is literally her pistol. Um, and her ability is pretty mid. Just because she has a silent step doesn't mean she's gonna be doing anything. The easiest way to kill a Cav is to simply drone her out. Once she's droned out, it's it's over. Um, whether you're playing against solo queue or a five stack, you're gonna get slammed over and over again once they drone you out, right? Because that's the first thing they're gonna do. They're gonna go on the roam clear, they're gonna find you, and they're gonna kill you. And if you don't even end up getting a single kill with Cav, then you've really done nothing, right? All you've done is die, and put your teammates in a worse position. I don't recommend playing Cav ever, and I know there's gonna be some people who comment, oh, but I'm really good with Cav. I get like two to three kills every round. You're you're literally in like copper, it has to be, because once you get to a higher division, uh, Cav is terrible, useless, and a waste of a pick. So don't play Cav. All right, now that we've ranked one operator in each of the tiers, we can go ahead and uh, get to it, right? So the first operator here is Alibi. For me, Alibi C tier, very similar to Thorn, um, just doesn't bring enough 
utility on a round by round basis to actually help the team win. I think her clones are extremely weak and the vast majority of even relatively decent players just aren't going to shoot at them. Uh, I think where she shines is she's a three speed with a nice gun. I like the MX Storm. I think it's a good gun. It's usable. And being a three speed allows you to kind of move around the map quickly. And I think she also has access to beepers, which is decent. However, again, there are just going to be better operators above her that are going to bring more utility on a round by round basis. And so I'm going to put her in C. I think it's fair. She's definitely not D tier, but she's also definitely not B tier. So yeah, C tier is the perfect spot for Alibi. Next on the list is Aruni. I am a massive fan of Aruni. Aruni is an amazing, amazing operator. Uh, Robot Fist can be used to make rotates, head holds, sight setup, all kinds of great stuff. She has access to the best, if not the second best DMR on defense. She also has her laser gates, which again, we've talked about this and we're gonna continue to talk about it. What do the laser gates do? They waste attackers' utility and they slow them down. That's all you want and that's all you need to be a good solid defender, right? All you have to do, set up your Aruni gates, get into a nice position, get your DMR up, anybody walks through, they're smoked. If you haven't used DMRs much in R6 or you just don't feel comfortable with them, I tr just trust me, start trying out Aruni, start getting better with the DMR and you're gonna see how broken it is. It's literally a two shot kill to any part of the body and of course a one shot headshot. And if they're weak, well then it could be a one tap. So, I mean, it's a no brainer. It's an unbelievable gun, but also Aruni brings so much utility to the team, whether again be setting up sight or just slowing down attackers. So she has to go in eight tier. And I think that's a fair rating for her. Uh, next on the list is going to be Bandit. Bandit is going to go in B tier for me. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Bandit. Matter of fact, he's a core operator that is required for a lot of setups on defense. Not every setup, I would say like half of them, but you still need a Bandit for the majority of the time. What I like about Bandit is you're able to Bandit trick. You're able to essentially, once they throw an EMP at your batteries, you're able to pick them up and then put new ones down quickly before they get the breach off, essentially destroying their electronics on the other side. However, this is not something that's easily doable in solo queue. Um, you don't have that safety of your teammates behind you watching or somebody above making sure a buck or an ash doesn't uh, try to play vert on you. And so, it's much more difficult to pull that kind of uh, strategy off in solo queue. But also what I kind of don't like about him is obviously you can't get hatches with uh, his bandit batteries. And you know, that's an unfortunate thing because sometimes getting hatches could be the difference between winning and losing. And that's gonna kind of segue me into the other wall denial operator, which is Cade. And for me, Cade is gonna go into A tier for a couple of reasons. He's a little bit better than bandit because first of all, you can conceal his Cade Claws a lot better. And there's some really cool spots that you can throw your Cade Claws that are impossible to be discovered uh, for the most part. Like almost rarely are the attackers gonna find your Cade Claws, right? Whereas with Bandit, there's kind of pre-selected areas that you can place your Bandit batteries and they're quite big and bulky and they're easy to find and they're easy to destroy with a Twitch drone or even a Flores drone. Uh, but where Cade is a little bit different is your, they're throwable, so you can hide them better, but also you can get hatches, right? I think also Cade has a better kit. He has uh, a better weapon. In my opinion, the MP7 isn't my favorite gun, but that's more of a preference thing. But I do think Cade still uh, beats out uh, Bandit in overall utility, just because you can get hatches, which gives him access to, you know, being more useful on a map by map basis, but also, you can disguise those Cade Claws, like I said before. So that's where the two wall denial operators are gonna go. Technically, there are other wall denial operators, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, next on the list is Clash. Clash is C tier. She's bottom, bottom C tier. Um, Clash is unusable in uh, solo queue. Don't try to use a Clash in solo queue because what Clash requires is uh, constant updating team information and having teammates to relay where people are pushing from so you can run and and slow them down and waste their time but when you're playing in solo queue you're blind you don't know what's going on your teammates are dropping left right and center next thing you know it's a 1v5 and you're sitting there on the point with your shield out with five attackers just standing in front of you and you get smoked right so where clash loses a lot of value is obviously in 
solo queue, but also Clash is a shield character. She can't really get kills. Obviously she can pull out her weapon and try to go for a kill, but that puts her in an extremely vulnerable state. And at that point, you might be asking yourself, why am I even playing Clash? I could just bring an operator who brings good utility and has a gun. And so that's where Clash kind of gets caught up. She really does have a ceiling when it comes to usability, uh, but I think where she shines is in team play where people are giving callouts and then you can rotate over and slow down those attackers. But otherwise, other than that, I think she has to go in C tier. I think she just brings a lot less utility than the people above her. And I think that's a fair rating. Next on the list is Doc. I'm gonna put Doc in B. And this is where I wanna talk about essentially all of the health characters in Rainbow Six Siege. So we have Doc, we have Rook, and we have Thunderbird. Um, and what all these characters share in common is that they're health op operators, obviously, but their ceiling is extremely limited. And here's why. Rainbow Six Siege is a one-shot headshot game, right? So it doesn't matter if you have a million health, if the enemy team is on point and they have good aim, they're just gonna one-tap you in the head. And it, again, it doesn't matter how much health you have, you're dead. So you can't guarantee on a game-by-game -game basis that you're going to be playing against people who aren't going to be headshotting you, right? So for that reason, these health operators are limited. Their ceiling can only go so high, and then after that, they're capped, right? Now, what's cool about Doc, at least, is that you could heal yourself, which again is interesting, but if you get headshotted, it doesn't matter. You're dead, you're spectating, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and rank all of the health operators right now. We're gonna put Doc in B, we're gonna put Thunderbird in D, and we're gonna put Rook in C. Um, Doc, in my opinion, is the best. He gives uh, good healing uh, and can heal himself. Rook is cool and all, but again, I, I just think bringing Rook brings little to no utility to the team. I'd rather you pick somebody else up here that's just gonna do a lot more for the team and we can deal without having the, the armor. Like the armor is fine. Yes, you can use it to self-res, but again, it makes a ton of noise and majority of the time you just get downed and then the, the person that downed you is just gonna walk up to you and execute you on the floor before you can revive yourself, right? And I know everyone's had that crazy moment where you're able to dock revive and then you clutch the round, or sorry, not dock revive, you're able to rook revive and you clutch the round and you know, you're like, oh, this is why rook is so good. But majority of the time, that's not gonna happen. So I'm putting rook in C. And then Thunderbird, I think is the weakest of them all. Her Thunderbird stations, her Kona stations are extremely big. They're easy to see. And the worst part is defender or attackers can actually use the Kona stations to gain health. So late in the round, when you've given up half of the point or you've been pushed back to a certain area, your Kona stations become health for the attackers, which is terrible. I think that's so bad. Not to mention, she has a terrible kit, no good guns, just nothing good about her, honestly. Thunderbird is, is one of the weakest operators in the game, and I think she low-key needs a rework. But yeah, I would really recommend not playing Thunderbird. Just bring somebody else on this list that's higher up, and you're gonna bring a lot more utility. And stop thinking that health is the end-all be-all in this game, because once you get into those higher uh, levels, or those higher rankings, you're just gonna get headshot, and then it doesn't matter how much health you have. So yeah, those are the healing characters. I think all of the rankings here are fair. Uh, Doc being the best just because he has the most flexibility, uh, Rook being a close second, uh, Thunderbird being in D, because she's just horrible. I mean, horrible. Uh, next on the list is Echo. I'm gonna put Echo in C. I think Echo is another one of those niche uh, operators that you select when you kind of know that the enemy team is gonna rush plant, um, or you've just experienced it a lot, so you, you, know, you pick Echo to stop them from being able to rush plant. Um, but other than that, Echo is terrible in solo queue. Similar to many of the cam operators that we're gonna talk about, uh, Echo is really bad in solo queue because you you know, you know, can only be on your cam for so long because you don't have that, those callouts from your teammates. And once you get off the cams, you can't really get back on them, which you know, at that point, why'd you even pick that character? Or you can sit there the whole round and try to use the cams, but most likely you're just gonna end up dying. Somebody's gonna drone you out and they're gonna come push you and kill you and because you didn't have any info, well, now you're dead. Uh, in a five stack, I could see Echo's usability going up, uh, but again, I just think his ability is extremely niche, and majority of the time, you're just better off bringing either a different cam operator just to give that information, or just picking somebody who's gonna 
slow down the defenders more. Uh, so I'm going to put Echo in C. He has impact grenades and he has a decent kit, but still, I think he's C tier. Uh, next on the list is Ella. Ella is also C tier, very similar to Thorn in the sense that the utility she brings is extremely limited. However, she also does have a deployable shield. So very similar to Thorn, they both have three traps. They both don't do lethal damage the majority of the time when they go off and they make a sound cue. Those are the benefits that I see uh, both in Thorn and Ella. And I think Ella also has a decent primary. Um, I know some people struggle with it, but I do think it's actually a pretty decent gun. Uh, however, the utility that she brings on a round by round basis is relatively limited. Uh, I think she's a little bit better in solo queue because you can kind of set up your surroundings with a few Grismont mines and then use the sound cues to swing off them and things of that nature. But in a five stack, you're just better off bringing somebody else who's going to give the team more utility. So yeah, Ella's going to go into C. Uh, next on the list is Fenrir. Fenrir is A tier for sure. He got nerfed and I think the nerf is pretty fair. I think it's pretty good. And I think reducing the amount of mines that he has is good. Redu uh, making them not bulletproof anymore is also good. However, he's still a powerhouse. He's still one of the best defenders. Um, and he's still getting banned every game. So, you know, all of these things are reflected uh, simply by playing the game. You'll see these kind of things. So for me, he's going to have to go in A tier still. However, I think the nerf took him out of S tier for sure. Um, because before the nerf, he was just head and shoulders the best defender. It wasn't even close. But I think he still stays in A tier because his ability is completely busted. It completely obscures the attacker's vision. It slows them down a considerable amount. And you're able to conceal his Fenrir mines really well. So it makes it very difficult for the attackers to find if you're a good Fenrir. And that wastes a lot of time, which again is perfect for you as a defender. You're wasting time, you're making them use utility, and it's helping you get kills. So I mean, it's pretty simple, it's a no-brainer. We're gonna put Fenrir in A, and let's move on to Frost. Frost for me is gonna go in... I guess she has to go in C as well. This is extremely, extremely similar to Ella and Thorn. Again, she comes with three welcome mats, and she has a deployable shield. What I do like about uh, Frost is you have a really nice primary weapon. I really enjoy the primary weapon that she has but you also do have a secondary shotgun, which is nice. And actually for that reason, I'm gonna move her up to B. The secondary shotgun alone just allows you to set up sight and does a lot for you as a defender, which makes her a better pick in solo queue and a better pick in team play. So actually I am gonna put her in B um, and her welcome mats are nice as well. Sometimes you can actually get kills with it. So unlike Thorn and um, Ella, Ella, you definitely use zero percent of the time can get a kill. Thorn, you'll get like a kill five percent of the time. I'd say the rate on the frost mats are like 30, 40 percent. You know, there's a good chance. Again, the higher rank you go, the less usable frost is. But I think overall, she'll bring a decent amount of utility and at least help set up sight. So for that reason, I'm going to put her in B. And then Goyo, I think Goyo probably goes top of B. I don't think he's A tier. I think Goyo is one of the best time waste operators in the entire game on defense. Um, he does a fantastic job of wasting the attacker's time uh, because all you have to do is place your Goyo canisters around the map. And then when you hear them or see the attackers pushing, you just blow them up. And I think the, the fire lasts for like at least 20 seconds. So, I mean, with five of them, you could waste a whole minute of the attacker's time just by simply shooting your Goyo canisters. Um, one thing that makes them a little weaker is they can be destroyed by Twitch drones or by explosives, which, you know, can be dangerous because if you set up all your Goyos and then a Twitch just comes through and just beep, 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 just blows them all up, then you've kind of lost that almost element of surprise, which really does suck. However, I think overall, he's a super solid character. He also has impact grenades. Uh, he has the Vector, which isn't one of my favorite guns, but, you know, you can do work with that. And again, really wastes a lot of the attacker's time. And that's, again, something that's important. It's either going to help you get kills, or it's going to help you waste time, or it might do a little bit of both. So I'm a big fan of Goyo. He's somebody that I don't see played very much, and you should definitely try him out if you're struggling on defense. Uh, let's move on to Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger for me... 
Jaeger is just the worst version of Lamai, so I'll put Jaeger in B. Uh, Jaeger arguably has one of the worst primary weapons in the game. It's actually not arguably, it's statistically one of the worst primary weapons in the game. Um, but what really makes him nice is, again, being able to destroy enemy utility when they throw it into the site, whether it be grenades, flashbangs, yings, all that kind of stuff, really does a good job of capturing them and destroying them. Uh, where he is a little bit more limited in comparison to Wamai is it's similar to the Bandit and Cade uh, debate where his ability is preset. You can only put them on walls or put them on the floor. Whereas with Wamai, you can throw them wherever you want, hide them, you know, put them in the floorboards. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Same with Cade, but with Bandit and Jaeger, you kind of have to put them in a preset location, which makes them more susceptible to being destroyed, whether it be getting shot, getting Flores droned, getting Twitch droned, all that kind of stuff, right? So for that reason, I'm gonna put him in B. He's still a decent operator and he brings a ton of utility on a round by round basis. Uh, he's good in solo queue, he's good in team play, but I think Wamai is just a better version of him. So I think B tier is fair for Jaeger. Uh, next on the list is Kepgen. Uh, for me, Capcan is probably going to go... I, I'm going to put him in C just because he's always banned. Um, but inherently, there's nothing wrong with Capcan. He's a pretty decent character. Um, has the opportunity to get multiple kills uh, per round if you use him correctly. Uh, but I think overall, his utility is a little bit limited in the sense that... Um, once the uh, enemy team knows that there's a cap can, they're just gonna play that bit slower uh, and destroy the cap cans because they know they're gonna be there, right? Th there's only one place that cap cans can be and it's on doorways. So all people have to do is place a little bit slower on the doorways and destroy the cap cans. But that does play into the fact that, yeah, it does slow down the enemy attackers, which is nice. But also, I think cap cans really bad in team play. Uh, I think there's operators on this list above him that just do a considerably better job. However, in solo queue, I could see why you're using a cap can. He has a good gun, he has impacts, and, you know, again, potential to get multiple kills with his ability. But he's always banned, so for that reason, I'm going to put him in C. Uh, next on the list is Legion. I'm putting Legion in S. Legion is the best trap operator in Rainbow Six Siege currently. Um, he has access to, I believe, 10 plus lesion mines throughout the round. The lesion mines not only slow down attackers, they deal damage and they make a sound cue. That's the trifecta. That's the exactly what you want out of a trap operator in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, and a bonus, if they have a lesion mine in their foot when they go to plant, it won't let them plant. They have to remove it in order to plant and that could single-handedly win you a round. Um, furthermore, he has an amazing T5 SMG. He has a super shorty to help set up sight, but where he lacks a little bit is his actual utility. He has access to a bulletproof cam and OBS blockers, which are both really bad. And yeah, it sucks that he lost his impact grenades, but I understand why, because he was an absolute powerhouse before uh, he got nerfed. I mean, he had everything you needed. Sight setup, impact grenades, great gun, great ability. But still, even with the nerf, he's easily S tier and definitely the best trap operator in the entire game. Uh, next on the list is Maestro. Maestro, very similar to Echo, just a niche character. Um, you know, you can't be on your cams forever, uh, especially in solo queue. Uh, can Maestro be really nice and fun in a certain scenario? Absolutely. But does he bring good utility on a round by round basis? I would have to say no, I don't think so. Uh, you're better off picking an operator who just brings better inherent utility without having to get on cams and then just, you know, using your actual gun skill to win rounds. Um, also, I really hate his primary weapon. I think it's terrible. It's just, it's disgusting. And I guess the shotgun that he has access to is decent, but really overall, Maestro is not somebody that I see as a high pick at, in any bomb site or any scenario on Rainbow Six Siege and I just don't think he brings enough utility to go any higher than C tier. Next on the list is Malizzi. Malizzi is going to go in A tier. Uh, Malizzi is again a great operator who wastes enemy time and that's what you ask for as a defender. 
she has access to three banshees which when um triggered will slow down enemy attackers a lot and it makes a sound cue so everybody around them knows where they're pushing from uh on top of that the banshees are bulletproof until somebody activates them which is really nice because they can't get destroyed by twitch drones flores drones all that kind of stuff um and it make actually i think flores drones can destroy them i apologize that's incorrect um but again, really good. She slows down defenders, or she slows down attackers, gives you a sound cue and allows you to play off of her ability, which makes her a really good pick in solo queue, but also a great pick in team play. She also has a great primary weapon and access to all of the scopes, which is nice. And she has impact grenades. So, I mean, Melissa does a lot for you. Uh, and she's somebody that I highly recommend playing. Now, one tip I would give you for Melissa is to make sure you're placing the Banshees in suitable positions where you know that the enemy team is going to attack if you end up placing your banshees in kind of weird niche spots then you're not going to end up triggering them very often and you're kind of going to be losing out on value so just put them in high traffic areas where you know enemies are going to push and you're good to go next is going to be mira for me for me mira is going to go b tier but she's going to be bottom of b um yeah, you can bring a Mira on every map, but I think that would be a very bad decision. I think the fact that Miras can just be destroyed by Ash is, you know, unfortunate. Because at the end of the day, every time I see there's a Mira on the enemy team, I'm just going to pick Ash and immediately destroy the Mira or pick Hibana. So uh, that's a hard and hard counter to Mira, and it's something that's actually very easy to do. It doesn't require a lot of skill. You just pull out your ability and destroy the Mira. And I mean, there goes all the utility that she had for the round, right? Um, another thing that I don't like about Mira is she's not very good in solo queue because you're not going to be able to communicate to your teammates that there's somebody in front of the Mira or vice versa. Your teammates aren't going to be able to communicate to you that, hey, somebody's pushing from behind you, get off the Mira and turn around. And so you're going to end up just dying a bunch or missing out on value because you can't communicate with your teammates. In a five stack or in even a duo queue, yeah, Mira can be a lot better because you have that communication. But overall, I think Mira lacks a lot of utility and she actually really isn't usable on every single bomb site. What's nice about Mira, she has beepers, she has a, a nitro cell and she has a shotgun to help set up site, which is cool. But overall, I don't think her ability brings too much utility to the table and that's why I'm gonna put her in B and let's move on to Mozzie. Uh, Mozzie for me is C tier. I'm not a big fan of Mozzie. I think Mozzie is actually a really bad operator, both in solo queue and in a five stack. I think he brings little to no utility. I think honestly, Mozzie is just a glorified mute uh, who destroys a couple of drones or captures a couple of drones, but rarely are you gonna have the time or even the ability to get on those drones and put them into suitable positions to be able to use them for information, right? And that's one of my biggest kind of complaints about Mozzie is that he, he's just a glorified Mew and if that's the case why not just play Mew? Mew is 10 times better. Um, yes he has access to a Nitro, yeah he has a good commando, you know a nice gun, but I'm not really a big fan of Mozzie. I don't think he brings enough utility to help the team and so for that reason I'm gonna put him in Z. Uh, next is Mew. Mew is the easiest S tier I've ever seen in my life. Mew does everything you want as a defender. He wastes enemy time by allowing the, or not allowing them to drone into certain areas. He destroys enemy utility by destroying anything electronic, whether it be regular drones, Twitch drones, Flores drones, all kinds of stuff. He counters like 20 of the attacker's abilities, whether it be Iana, Grim, sorry, not Grim, whether it be Iana, Finca, any ability, Lion, any ability triggered near the Mute Jammer won't work. And that's just unbelievably strong. But furthermore, he can be used as wall denial to stop people from entering site. So he does so much for the team and he can bring utility in a variety of ways. He also has access to the shotgun, which is completely busted, and the SMG-12, which is probably the best combo on defense. Oh, and he has a Nitro Cell as well. Yeah, Mute does it all, site setup, information denial, time wasting, wall denial. I mean, dude, there's nothing Mute can't do and he can be used on every single map, every single bomb site, every single time, whether it be solo queue, team play, Mute is gonna bring a ton of value to the team. And he's honestly somebody that you should be bringing pretty much every single round. 
at least somebody should be playing him. So yeah, Mute's going into S tier, easy S tier. Let's move on to Oryx, who is gonna be bottom of D tier, terrible operator, horrible ability. Yeah, you can go up hatches, congrats. Uh, yeah, you have the T5, but just use a lesion. Horrible. Uh, and no, he's not good at setting up sight because every time you run through a wall, you take damage. I think Oryx is probably the worst defender on this list. Never play Oryx, just play somebody else. Uh, next is Pulse. I'm gonna put Pulse in B. Similar to Castle, just a really nice standard operator. Also has the UMP, also has a shotgun. Uh, his ability is cool and usable both in solo queue and team play. Though again, in team play, it's better to be able to call out to your teammates and say, hey, there's somebody here, there's somebody on the breach, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm a big fan of Pulse. You can do cool stuff like play from below, uh, scan them, and then nitro sell them from below, which is really nice. Uh, and overall, yeah, just a really standard, good operator. Does he bring a lot of utility to the team? In solo queue, not so much. In solo queue, I would consider putting him in C, but in team play, he can bring quite a bit of utility. So being able to communicate to your teammates where enemy attackers are is always nice. And so I'm gonna put him in B tier. Uh, next on the list is Sentry. Sentry is gonna be A tier for me, and here's why. What's really nice about Sentry is, let's say you guys go into a ranked match, you're playing a five stack, this is a five stack scenario, and you pick Wamai, Aruni, Cade, and Malusi, right? And everybody's happy, everyone's like, cool, this is nice. But then you guys realize, wait a minute, we don't have a deployable shield, we need a deployable shield for the strategy. Well, guess what? There's your uh, perfect operator to pick. Striker, or sorry, Sentry. Sentry plugs that hole that you need to fill for your uh, rank stacks, right? If you guys are missing a deployable shield, run Sentry. If you're missing, if you guys wanna bring an extra C4, bring Sentry. If you guys need beepers, bring Sentry. Like he is just able to be super flexible and bring the utility that you need and that can help you win the round. And that's what I really like about Sentry. Uh, also has access to the commando, which is great because like I said, Mozzie is terrible. So now you actually have a reasonable operator who can use the commando. But again, just that flexibility is so amazing to have, uh, both in solo queue and in team play. I think in team play, he's a lot better, but in solo queue as well, just kind of being able to say, okay, well, I want to play in this position. So I'm going to bring barbed wire and a beeper uh, and some beepers so that I can uh, know when people are pushing from behind me, that kind of thing. So the opportunity is limitless with uh, Sentry and yeah, I'm a big fan of them. I like both Sentry and Striker. I think just being able to flip flop through your uh, utility is really good. But I think Sentry is actually better just because the defender utility is a lot stronger than the attacker utility. But yeah, A tier, definitely a good operator. Use them if you're struggling just to kind of reset and use just a basic operator. And yeah, you'll find success. Uh, next on the list is Smoke. Smoke is gonna be A tier for me as well really good operator what does he do best waste time waste so much of the attackers time and by the time they get into the site guess what they're going to be met with you and your shotgun and smg combo which is going to be disgusting and it's going to get you so many kills um what i really like about smoke also is just that ability to completely lock off a certain area of the map if you see two three people pushing a certain area you throw a smoke out and guess what now they can't enter that point they're gonna either be forced to find a way around or if it's they're low on time, they actually might just be screwed. They're gonna to have to run through it, take a ton of damage, and then you cook them. So I really like that about Smoke is just really denying areas of the map and being able to almost force attackers into certain areas where you can be in a optimal position to kill them. And that's what I really like about Smoke. Standard character, has all the good stuff that you need, easy A tier. Uh, next is Solus. Solus is going to go into B. I think the nerf killed Solus. I mean, killed, killed Solus. She went from S tier to almost C tier, in my opinion. Uh, if you didn't know, now you can't use her ability during the drone phase, which I think is fair. That was a necessary uh, nerf. But also, you can't use her ability if it's not fully charged. Meaning, if you use her ability and then it goes to like halfway charge and you get off of it, you can't use it until it gets back to full which really limits her ability as a whole. And then the final nerf is that she lost her impact grenades, so you no longer can play from below, scan the planter, and then blow them up 
before they plant or post plant. You can't do that anymore. So uh, a lot of utility taken away from Solus and I think B tier is fair for her because she still can be usable. It's still nice to clear drones off site. It's still nice to be able to see electronics, right? To see if a blitz is pushing you guys. All that stuff is nice, but she's just a lot less usable now and requires a little bit more finesse to kind of uh, make good. So for that reason, I'm gonna put her in B. Uh, next on the list is Tachanka, D tier. Not much to say here. Terrible gun, horrible ability. Uh, yeah, he can waste enemy time, but guess what? The issue with him is that when you have this Tachanka launcher out, the chances of you dying is like 90% because you don't have a gun out to defend yourself. So you're just gonna get swung and smoked. Uh, or if you stick yourself out of cover to shoot some Tachanka things, you're gonna get smoked. I think Tachank is terrible. He doesn't bring very much utility to the team. Just play Goyo, just play a Rooney, just play Smoke. Does much better of a job and actually has a reasonable gun. Tachanka's gun is terrible. Tachanka needs a rework or some kind of thing to revive this guy because he's terrible. So I'm putting him in D. Uh, next on the list is Tuberau. Tuberau for me is S tier. Unbelievably good operator. Amazing kit. Nitro, beepers the AR uh, DMR, which is the, the strongest, if not the second strongest DMR in the game. Uh, but what makes Tuberau so good is denying those breaches. Uh, Tuberau can shave off 36 seconds of the attacker's time simply by throwing his Zoto canisters at a wall. But also he can do that on hatches. So again, just even more utility. But also Tuberau's ability shuts off like more than half of the enemy attacker abilities which is insane. Um, people can't activate their abilities inside of Tuberau's, drones get frozen, abilities get frozen, nomads don't go off when uh, you throw a Tuberau at them. It's crazy what you can do with Tuberau. Uh, so, and there's a lot of stuff that just kind of isn't discovered or well known yet. And I think Tuberau will continue to be better and better. Uh, he's usable on the majority of mom sites, usable on team play or solo queue. And overall, I think Tuberau is really good because again, he wastes time or completely locks out the enemy team's ability to get the breach. And if they can't get the breach, it makes winning that round so much easier. Think of a chalet basement. Imagine if you just deny them from getting that breach. Well, now you kind of limit their ability to attack the site. And from there, you just use your utility and win the round. So Tuberau, amazing, S tier. Let's move on to the next operator, who is Valkyrie. Uh, for me, Valkyrie is the best uh, cam operator in the entire game. Brings so much utility to the team, whether it be solo queue or team play. However, again, like all other cam operators in solo queue, the cams lose so much value because first of all, you can't get on them as much because you don't know when somebody's going to push you. So you're going to be able to use them a little bit, but then you have to get off. And then second of all, your teammates aren't going to use your Valk cams. Look, we've all been there. We've played Valk. You're the last one alive. All four of your teammates are dead and they're all on TikTok. You're like waiting for the yellow ping. You're waiting for somebody to red ping somebody and it never comes. They don't even use them at all. So you lose so much utility with Valk when you're playing her in solo queue. However, in team play, that's when Valk is amazing. She's able to set up her cams and either have a dead teammate watch certain areas of the map and ping out for people or you're able to comfortably get on your Valk cams knowing that your teammates have your back and just be able to call out every single player that's pushing the site and just help you guys win. Because in, in Rainbow Six Siege, information is king. The team with more information usually ends up winning the round. So that's why I'm gonna put Valk in A, the best cam operator, really good kit, Deagle to make head holes, impacts to make site setup, really good character. Uh, next is Vigil. I'm gonna put Vigil in B. I think Vigil is just a much better version of Cav because Cav's biggest weakness was getting droned out. Well, guess what? With Vigil, you don't get droned out. Yeah, they know you're in the relative area, but it's a lot different than getting droned out. Also, Vigil actually has a reasonable set of weapons. He has the, uh, the KIA assault rifle, which is a really good gun. And he has impact grenades, which is nice. Overall, you know, there's not much to say about Vigil. He doesn't technically bring any utility to the team. But if you were gonna play a roaming style operator like that, Vigil is the perfect one to play. Much better than Cav and can help you get some of those picks and you know help your team win the round. However, do I recommend playing him every single game, every single time? No, I don't think he brings 
enough utility to justify that decision, but he is the premier roamer on defense, so I'm going to put him in B tier. And then finally, Warden. Uh, for me, Warden, there's nothing wrong with Warden. I just think, um, you know, since he lost the 1.5, uh, his pick rate has gone down a lot because people can't crutch it anymore. But what's cool about Warden is he's actually pretty decent in solo queue. You can use him to hold those power positions. And even if they go to Ying Yu, Flash Bang Yu, whatever it may be, smoke you out, you know, you're able to hold that position and kill anybody trying to push the site, which is nice. But I think he's a little bit too niche to be brought every single time. He's, some, he's more of a reaction pick. He's somebody that you pick after you guys just got smoked by Ying, then you go ahead and you pick Warden. You know what I'm saying? But he's more of a reaction pick than somebody that you can bring every single time. And he also brings little to no utility to the team. So for those reasons, he has to go and see the people above him just bring more utility. So yeah, I'm going to put him in C. And that's the tier list, boys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new. Sorry for yapping so much, but I just really wanted to kind of give you guys a nice overview on, first of all, why I put each operator in each category, but also, you know, just a little understanding of their ability, what they're good at, what they're not so good at. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, and if you learned something new, make sure to hit that sub button, join the Pixel Peak Army and support your boy, and comment down below if I got anything wrong, if I put an operator in the wrong list. Yeah, just let me know. And that's going to be it for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.